Kevin's going to talk about his peas of architecture. Peas. Um, pretension, post-justification. Prostitution. Prostitution, all the important peas of architecture. There's King Bill. Ah. You've honestly never been here before. No, uh, can we see it? Look at that beautifully designed fence. It's not really. Instead of building another big terrace and filling this up, which is what council wanted me to do, they wanted me to fill this space up. That's north that way. We actually decided to put in a little garden and just a pavilion. Because around here, there's these little pocket parks. There's another one up here I'll take you to. And so we decided to add a little pocket park. And this fence was meant to be really low with trees growing out of it. And council were like, they were so angry about it. So we went, F it then. We'll leave a goddamn shitty metal fence in front. Bastards. Yeah, I remember you telling us about that. Yeah. I like it though, it's very Fitzroy. That's one of Kevin's peas. Place. We can do a tour of King Bill. We can do a, a, a video, an Archie Marathon video of King Bill if you guys want. Let us know if you want to Kev to work his magic in there and I'll uh, organize with the clients. Leave a, leave a comment. One thing that we talk about a lot is just how complex it is to build buildings and how difficult it is and how it seems to be getting more complex, getting broken down into so many smaller pieces of specialization that needs so much thought. And that what's really important for a designer is to remember the basics. I'm always going back to... Um, uh, Francis to, Ching? Yep, and a pattern language um, and students... Uh, lessons, lessons for students in architecture by lessons. Herman Hertzberger. That one. Yeah. Some basic texts and getting back to the basics. Because I think much of the conversation on social media and other places has been, uh, in, and YouTube as well, has been about uh, technical skills yeah. and uh, technical information. And there is not much discussion about the bigger picture of why we built, why we propose these things. Yeah. Why do they look like that? Yeah. And the basics you need to remind yourself of, and it doesn't matter then what tool you use to explore those basics. It can be a pencil. Yes, it can be a computer. They're all tools for representation, but at the end of the day, what is, what is fundamentally happening in your buildings? Why are you doing what you're doing? And what are they trying to achieve? And how do they do that? So one of the easy way to start to try to see the big picture is to remind yourself the basics in architecture. The important of the understanding of the big picture is that the big picture often feeds into the smaller details and why you make certain decisions. Because mm. otherwise you're just blindly making decisions for no reason. Yeah. And it's very hard to communicate to people that. I mean, you know, not everyone's going to be big uh, crayon kind of designer architect, but to understand the principles um, of the big picture, it's important in every single stage in the design and build process. And it's important that the team knows the why as well, what you're trying to achieve, um, which might my staff, if they watch these videos, would go, what the hell are you talking about? You always fail to communicate this. But it's really important that your team knows the bigger picture and understands it. Because when they're making those micro, well, not micro decisions, when they're making decisions about specific small things that are really important, you've got to remember that it ties into this overall agenda for the project. It can't be its own little design skirmish mm. uh, for its own sake. In terms of critique as well online, I think we've moved into the world of like. Yeah. Like. I like that. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Mm, that's ugly. Yeah. Which is very subjective. Yeah. Um, the thing is to remember is that every project has all these P's that I'm going to talk about. The architect has to convince everyone else that this is a good idea to spend money. There's a whole, there are teams of people, despite university team to seem to make it look like you're just one person designing everything. Yeah. Which is not true. There are teams of people, your clients, uh, builders, Everyone involved are trying to make this thing happen. So, And then there's the person that muscles their way in and takes all the credit. <laughs> I did that. In yeah. fact, it's a lot of very smart people contributing. So give every project a credit and try to understand the things behind it, what makes it the way it is. Place. So every project has a place, mm -hmm. first one. And place is not just the site. Place is what makes this place special it's not just the physical constraints but there's also uh the political social 
cultural. cultural. And time is a place as well. I think it's related to time. So there is, there's something that grounds it for its particular uh, moment and quality that gives it a sense of place. Mm. What is the spirit of the place? I mean, we talk about the sense of genius loci, the sense of place. Mm. And so architects often try to sense more than just a physical site boundary of the physical constraints of the site, but actual uh, quality that makes a place a place rather than a space. This is a place. This is a place that um, people are having a lot of play. It's all happening. Purpose? Yeah, so every project has a purpose. So remember that they are either houses, concert halls, uh, police station. Oh, should I mention police? <laughs> <laughs> no, every project has a purpose and it's not just a physical brief. So there's a lot more to it than that. There's also the social purpose. Mm -hmm. which is beyond the brief. Goes yeah. beyond the brief. So that's why I think police station is an interesting one. That's um, where I think you can take on almost any project and within that treat it as part of the broader context. Yeah, um, the social, cultural yeah. purpose. Yeah. yeah. One of my, one of my, uh, Elliot, one of my employees, his um, final year project was an Ameri USA um, embassy in Jerusalem. Ooh. That's... That's brave, yeah, isn't it? That's, but it was full brave. of, uh, it was very polemical. It was actually an incredible project, very brave. So I do like that, that you need to think about the purpose beyond just what your client's after, but it's social purpose as well. Next P would be something we talk about a lot. It's uh, precedence. Oh yeah, precedence. What the hell does that mean? I think a lot of people will ask. Yeah. What is your understanding of precedence? Oh, it's just looking at stuff that other people have done, but you should try to target it. You know, the easy example is the library. So if you get a commission for a library, go look at other libraries. Um, and that's really interesting because something like a library, like many spaces, is changing in its nature. Like what is the purpose of a library now? And that's the reason you would look at both contemporary and historical libraries. And then you get to distill, once you get that look at those precincts, you get to really distill down its purpose beyond just the written brief you got from the client. I need to fulfill these tasks. I need these types of spaces. So library is actually a good one. Uh, not only just the purpose, there's also the place because often they are urban. They are, um, it's the last bastion of a free public place. You know, it's, it's provided for free. Museums? Not all of them are free, man. Hospitals? Courthouses? Not all of them are free. United States, come on. Yeah. Oh, you got to pay for everything, don't you? you got to pay for everything. So yeah, libraries are, it's still the last bastion of a free public space. That it's a, it's a building that provides... Park? Yeah. You know, it, you know. <laughs> what you mean? I'm just being an idiot, <laughs> which is my job. <laughs> to annoy Kevin, I can't figure this out. I, you just... just mm. Don't break it, man. <laughs> Why do you hand me things then? Oh, if you hand them to me, I was oh, going to break you do? I didn't do it. You... He, he did it. <laughs> I'll hold this. Oh god. I'm breaking these toys. You have. You do, man. F***ing hell. <laughs> Pretty. Oh. You okay, Kevin? If I f*** up? Oh, you have. Don't touch Kevin's toys. Okay, we've got place, we've got purpose. And we've then together we've got precedence, precedence, which is about how people have solved issues with place and purpose and all the problems that comes with it and the technological aspects to social aspects to um, physical site constraint aspects you know they're all mm. part of the understanding so you look at precedents in a way that you know they all have these things to push against then we have product which is the end product yeah and that's the bit that it has to speak for itself, right? A building, you can't, architects can't stand in front of it and talk about it in, to, to everyone. Uh, you can't, well, they could if they set up camp. They can't post justify. Doesn't matter what you did before and what you say, what stories you spin. Yeah, a building is going to be there longer than you are, typically. Yeah. Um, and it needs to do the work. 
And it's great those projects that get to 25 years or more awards. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because yeah. they have stood the test of time. Yeah. Not just uh, photos that it took to um, gain attention. So yes, the product is uh, very important. What's that, is that five? No, but how to get to the product is process. And ah, that is the yeah. biggest component, I think, for architects. And that's what we're really employed for, really, is the process of taking place purpose understanding and knowing precedence mm -hmm. and to get to the product. Yeah. So the process is this amazing, uh, often not linear um, thing that drives everyone kind of insane. You have trouble sleeping, <laughs> yeah, universities at school, university, sorry, yeah. at architecture schools, you, yeah. you know, in the office, your nightmares. In, yeah, in the office we call it the fog of war. You've done it before, you think you know what you're doing and then you start, you roll up your sleeves and you start getting into it to try and create this product, this, this beautiful space. And it's always a challenge. Um, that's why things like grand designs are quite helpful because they actually give people an insight into just how, so often it's management, chaos management yeah. or free fall. You're in sort of this uh, controlled um, free fall uh, and it's about, um, managing the damage or resisting the damage to make sure that what you've imagined at the start is protected at the end creatively creative and it's super hard and it's that goes, goes all the way through to the build process as well right that's yeah it's not just uh, things on paper it's what actually happens to get to the actual final product yeah and it's we, still design decisions and you mentioned earlier how it's not just one person it's a whole team and so that team is not always going to be on point either you're going to have some people that are having a bad day or some people that are just crap at what they do or don't care mm. um, and you have to manage all of those dis different personalities to try and create what you know hopefully seems inevitable beautifully simple inevitable in the end that's why the clear idea of a, a clear I main idea it's important and that main idea means that there are also scope to make changes but without losing its strength yeah and if you well that's the thing is you, if you lose the idea then it's like what What's the point of it? It's just another, you know, soulless building. A series of problems solved for no apparent reason. Because anyone can build stuff. You know, we've got plenty of buildings. We have plenty of pe people can actually build things, but to design something that actually means something and does, you know, bring delight and joy to people yeah. and to use, that's a whole different skill. All right, so that's the five piece, but you've added a sixth. Yeah. Um, you put a big circle around all of them, haven't you? Because well, what's it about? It is about people. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we, we tend to forget that. You know, we, we tend to forget that we are designing for people, especially the more computer we get, you know, you're looking at the model, you, you, you're just flying in, in space. You're looking at it like a helicopter. Yeah. You're never really in a, you're not really there. You're not getting a sense of the materiality and touching yeah. it and thinking about light and all those things as much as uh, it, it may it sound odd to any lay people that aren't in the business to hear that. Well, of course, it's about people. It might seem just self-evident. Of course, it's about feeling for people. But the thing is, you become detached from your user group sometimes because what you're trying to do is solve problems. So how do you do the mechanical, the electrical? How do you service this building? How do you deal, you know, put a lift in? What's the structure doing? And it becomes a, a series of um, tasks, um, uh, material problems to solve. And you know, there are some professions involved in the building industry where it's just not, it's not their job to think about people at all. Mm. They're there to solve a specific problem. So in many ways, the architect is the one that, there that's meant to um, protect not only the users, but the general pub public's uh, interests. Mm. And you can become detached from that so easily. Yeah, it just becomes a conversation about technical things. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes a question of uh, features. Hey, we've got these cool features. Here are five Ps plus one. Uh, what are your thoughts? Have you got any other for me? Um, what? Hang on. What are you doing, Andrew? I found two more Ps. Sorry, you were saying, are there any more Ps? Do you guys know of? Leave a comment. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think it's you need to return back to the basics every time or are we just idiots that keep forgetting? Um, 
we love you guys thank you so much for watching uh thanks for getting us to a thousand likes again uh, likes subscribers and um yeah tell your friends about us we want to meet new people <laughs> see ya <laughs>